Hello everybody, this is Andrew Isley again. Uh, this is our second tutorial and we're going to take a look at uh, the Reason instruments and how to create them and just give you a general overview of what each of them sort of sounds like or are good for in terms of their content. So one way of creating an instrument is just to go up to the Create menu and select, say, the Subtractor. Now the Subtractor uh, you'll see here, let me just drag this down a little bit. Whenever you create an instrument, it automatically will generate a track for it. Um, that's not necessarily the case for everything. Um, most effects processors don't necessarily create a track for them, although you can manually create a track by right-clicking on it or going up into the, uh, the edit menu when you have the uh, device selected. But in this case, this is the uh, subtractor. Um, another way of creating instruments very, very quickly is to use your show tool window. So I'll bring this up. Whoops, I put it outside the screen. So I'm just going to drag this over. So this is our tool window. And from this side, you can do a create instrument. Uh, here we already see the subtractor. The next uh, one down is called the Thor Polysonic Synthesizer. In order to engage this or to create them, all you have to do is, is double click on them. It creates that. I can do the same thing with the Maelstrom, the NN19, the NNXT, the Dr. Octorex, the Redrum, and the Korg Drum Designer. So I'll go ahead and close this. So now we have a full assortment of instruments. Uh, the first one that we're going to look at, though, is the Subtractor. So I select the Subtractor and uh, I select the track, and you'll notice that it uh, automatically brings it into view in terms of our rack. So now if I hit a key on my keyboard, we can actually hear that synthesizer. Now this is a, they call it a polyphonic synthesizer. Uh, it can work monophonically. Right now it's set up to be monophonic. Right here you can see under polyphony it's only set to one. So if there's only if the polyphony is set to one, it's working as if it was a monophonic synthesizer. Uh, this is based on analog subtractive synthesis. Uh, we go into greater detail about synthesis and what all of these knobs and buttons do uh, in our advanced book and with the advanced tutorials. Um, but for right now, let's just take a look at how we can load up different sounds and patches. So over here, you will find uh, the patch window. This is telling you the current name of the patch. Uh, if I navigate over here to the Browse Patch button and click on it, we get uh, this window that pops up. And one of the cool things about this window, uh, it automatically is brought into our subtractor patches. Um, if I were to navigate out, I can look and see that this is actually all part of the Reason Factory sound bank. So the CDs that you use, or the DVDs that you used in terms of uh, installing everything, um, there's a couple of things that we can use. There's a couple of things in here um, in terms of uh, the sound banks. One is called the Orchestra Sound Bank, which is uh, really designed just to work with the NNXT sampler. And then pretty much everything else is inside the Reason Factory Sound Bank. But if you notice, since I'm in the reason, like in the subtractor, if I go into say the redrum and look in these folders, you're not going to see anything because it's not a subtractor patch. So let's go back to our subtractor patches. There they are. Uh, here we can find bases. If I'm looking for a specific type of base, uh, I can click it. And then I can just use my arrows to to move down. I can hit OK, and now I'm back out. And since I'm already in the base folder, uh, if I want to get to the next patch, I can use these up and down arrows. So as you can see, this is uh, a fantastic instrument in regards to, uh, you know, synth sounds, it has effects. <laughs> it 
other things that we can do with this um, instrument. It's really just a, a good general synthesizer, uh, not very complex, but uh, can generate some really great sounds. So apart from anything, you can do percussion with it. These are all the different categories, monosynths, pads, percussion, polysynths. Uh, I highly suggest going through and listening to all of the different patches. Uh, a great way of getting used to uh, the different sounds and patches, uh, a great way of learning that is to get a piece of paper. And as you go through, if you find anything that's really inspiring, write down the name of it. Um, that way... You know, you're not constantly searching for new sounds. You already have an idea of uh, what sounds are really working for you or what sounds are, are going to work in your particular production that you want to work on. So let's go ahead and look at another synthesizer. I'm going to move on down to the, uh, the Thor synthesizer. Now, the Thor is uh, a really complex, uh, they call it a polysonic synthesizer. Um, it doesn't look like much here, but if we go down to where the show programmer button is and engage that, it opens up and you can see that it's a, it's a very large instrument that has uh, lots of different capabilities. Um, again, engaging uh, the different types of, of uh, patches, you can see there's all kinds of fun stuff in here. We can go to bases. There's also um, effects, uh, polyphonic synthesizers. There's sequence effects. There's rhythmic effects. And the great thing about these particular things, they tend to, um, these particular patches, they tend to follow whatever your tempo is. So right now we're at 120 beats per minute. Um, if I were to pick, uh, as I switch through different patches, it should always lock up to whatever the tempo of my song is. So that's kind of cool. So real quick, you'll notice here, um, this is the main instrument panel. We have uh, our oscillator sections here. Um, this particular synthesizer has three oscillators, uh, two filters, um, three envelopes, a, a dedicated envelope for your filter, your amplifier, and then you have a global envelope, and then you have a modulation envelope. It has two LFOs. Uh, it does give you a third filter, but that's actually part of the, uh, the global output section. Uh, and it also has a shaper, which is um, sort of like waveform distortion, that kind of thing. So you can utilize that to great effect. Again, I go through a lot more detail in terms of how to utilize and work through all of this in our second book. Um, down below, you'll notice this section here is our routing matrix. So you'll see your source. Um, you'll notice here where it says Rotary 2 uh, Amplifier Envelope Release. So as I move the release, it's basically changing the envelope delay. See, rotary one is controlling uh, the, de the delay wet and dry. Pretty cool stuff. And then uh, down below at the very bottom, you'll notice that there is a sequencer. Uh, it's a, step, uh, a simple 16-step sequencer, uh, but it's very powerful. Um, you can sequence notes, but you can also sequence velocity, gate length, step, uh, and all different types of curves and things. Um, it's very useful and a lot of fun to play with. Um, let's go ahead and move on to our Maelstrom synthesizer. Now the Maelstrom, I'm just going to go ahead and select the track. The Maelstrom is a really unique synthesizer. Uh, there's not another synthesizer in the world uh, that I know of that um, is is this type of synthesis. It's, an, it's a combination of what we call granular synthesis and wavetable synthesis. Wavetable, uh, which was, I guess, I believe it was pioneered by Casio, but it really became, um, it really became the, uh, it became very popular with Korg, with like the Korg wave station. 
um, PPG had the the wave, and then eventually uh, Waldorf made the microwave and the the wave synthesizers. But essentially, what it is is a bank of oscillators. Uh, the oscillators are are the the devices or the it's the portion of the synthesizer that generates sounds. Uh, on say like an analog synthesizer up here, you'll notice um, this is a triangle wave. So if we were to play something, we're going to hear a triangle wave, and it's going to be processed through all of the other uh, components of the synthesizer. Uh, down here we have um, different wavetables that we can select, uh, which is really powerful. Um, but then it's combined with what uh, we call granular synthesis, which essentially takes a sound and chops it up into tiny little components. It's almost like grains of sound, and each, each grain of the sound can be manipulated in different ways. So that's where you get the motion and the shift and the index uh, in terms of all of that. Uh, again, we go through all of this uh, in the advanced book. We go in great detail about how all of this works. But um, this particular synth is really great at uh, aggressive sounds. Um, one of my favorites, if you look under the... Uh, the monosense, there's amp feedback, and this is just a monster patch. So if you're into industrial or anything that's grating, it almost sounds like a guitar, guitar amp feedback or something like that, but it's 